Hey everyone, so we've just released the Golem Beta 3 that I'm super excited to uh, cover you with. And with that, we're going to go through another requester tutorial. So previously in uh, Beta 2, Beta 1, and the previous alphas, uh, providers on the Golem network haven't been able to communicate with one another, which is changing with this new release. And I'm really excited to go through some of the examples where we uh, demonstrate that, and hopefully it can spark some ideas on what you can build on the Golem network. So uh, with this kind of uh, new VPN functionality, it builds on top of the previous beta. So the beta two, we had uh, services that were introduced, and this is kind of another Look on top of that where you run a service across multiple providers that can communicate which is really exciting so what i'm going to go through to start off with is the requested development uh, quick primer and i am going to start off or you're going to start off with uh, installing uh, yagna i've actually already installed so i'm going to continue on to the uh, running of the Yagna daemon. There we go. So now you can see in my shell that the Yagna daemon is starting and should be running. And then you can move to a new shell where I've actually already started a virtual environment. I will go into these steps a little bit further on, but I've also already created a uh, requester so I can do Yagna app key list that will show my uh, app key or the requester then you will need to make sure that you have funds as a requester see I've done funds I can see that with Yagna payment status so I'm jumping through these steps quite quickly just so I can dive into the meat of it but I will also link in the description where you can see the uh, requester primer kind of walk through that's a bit more in detail uh, for the beta 2 or beta 1 it might have been then we also may need to make sure that we initialize as a sender so you do yagna payment initialize or init sender we've done that and this is the section where we've uh, we create our virtual environment I've created and started my virtual environment. I've installed the dependencies. I've uh, cloned your puppy and moved to branch seven. And I've also uh, gone to the uh, examples and SSH example, which I'll be running for you today. What I haven't done yet is uh, exported my app key so I can do that. Export my app key. There we go. And then we are ready to run on to some examples. So let's move to the uh, service model development and the VPN example. So what this example does is that it illustrates the Golem VPN capabilities by enabling SSH connections to a payload. Uh, running on a virtual machine on a provider node will actually be starting two providers as a service and I'll be demonstrating a bit how they can communicate sort of as a building block uh, for yourself to develop on. So to start off with we need to make sure that we have the prerequisites so you need to run through the quick, quick primer you are able to run the first task on Golem I should have been able to run that with the steps that I've run through so far. And then you need WebSocat. I've installed WebSocat, so I'm going to continue on. And this section of the handbook, so the handbook, for those that don't know, is handbook.golem.network. And it uh, is the uh, documentation for Yagna. So with that, we're actually going to be running this example. 
So I will go Python SSH py. And now what we will be doing is uh, the service will be uh, launched inside the virtual machine on the provider's end to allow SSH connections. I will get some login details and a password. There's the first one or our first provider node that we can log into. And then I will get a second one in a second. And it's important to note here for providers as well that uh, the provider is required to offer the VPN capabilities for its virtual machine runtime, which is automatically supported by any provider uh, running Yagna 0 0.8 or above. So providers need to be updated. That's a note to all you providers out there. Make sure that you're updated. And now we've got both of our connections ready. So I can actually take this command that is given to me to connect with. I can create a new shell and connect with this. There we go. So we accept, we need to grab the password. So the password is actually just this password. This is just a quite a basic example. So there's not much contained within the example other than to demonstrate uh, or other than to demonstrate that the provider is actually able to communicate within this. So here we can see our first uh, provider. If we do if config, we should be able to see that we are connected to 192.168.03. So I can actually do some things like, uh, we can see that there's not much in this directory. I can make a new directory. We can call it test. And then I've created a new directory on the virtual machine that the provider is running. I can, for example, move into that test directory. Obviously, I didn't put anything in there, but it's more just for demonstration purposes that we are SSH'd into this provider. So I think what I'll do is I will create a screen. Let's call it uh, provider one. In here, we can actually ping. So let's ping the second provider. There we go. So we can see that we've got a ping to the second provider, which means that they're communicating within this private network. So we'll re leave this ping running. I've exited that screen, so it should still be running. And let's SSH into our other second provider. So I'll SSH uh, 192.168.02, which should be. I need to accept, and I'll also need to grab the password that was created for me. Great, there we go. So now we should be able to see that we don't have any, so I'm just doing list directory. Don't have any directories similar or different from the provider that we were just connected to. And uh, let's do a screen, start, uh, provider, this is provider, provider two. So we can also see if config that we are on 192.168.02, connected through SSH from the first provider, we can actually ping the first provider there we go. So this is our connection or our ping to the first provider. We can exit that screen. We can actually exit from this and see that our test, this is our test directory. We can reconnect to our screen, see that our ping has still been going. So what I've done here is not really too much interesting other than to display that the providers are both running and able to communicate with one another. So I will uh, actually exit. And from here on, we're going to move on to the next example. The next example, if we finish this service, so the service here is still running, we can control C to finish the service. And then we're going to move on to the 
minimalistic HTTP proxy. This example uh, enables the local requester agent to serve as a proxy for web servers running on the provider nodes. Uh, at the end of this example, we'll have a static customized HTML page. It will be quite basic. Uh, it will consist of a local HTTP server listening to connections on our requester machine and distributing the request to the local HTTP server on the providers. Um, so what does this mean? It means that uh, we'll run the local HTTP server on our own machine, listening to the connections on port 8080. Uh, this is customizable in the parameters. It can be any port. Um, in this example, we will be running two HTTP instances on providers, so two separate ones, and uh, that will proxy the connection from our local HTTP server to the providers. And it will alternate uh, the request to individual providers, a bit like a round robin uh, fashion. So to do that, uh, before we start the example, I need to first change into the uh, HTTP proxy example folder. And what we'll be doing is that we will be going down here. So this uh, part of the documentation that I'm in describes uh, a bit more in detail about what is going on in terms of the code. Uh, I'm going to first create a, a virtual private network, so a VPN, through which the provider nodes will be part of. And through the requester myself, uh, they will be able to, or I will be able to communicate with those providers. And secondly, uh, we will instruct the Golem engine to commission the service instances and connect them to the just created uh, VPN. So let's run the example. Okay. So now we will just wait for the service to start. And once the uh, commissioned instances of our service are up and running, the example will finally start the local HTTP server and announce its creation through the console. There we go. So we are able to put this uh, link, open that, and we should see in action, hello from inside Gollum running on BristleCon. And these are, yeah, essentially the main, main components of these two examples. So what we really wanted to display here is firstly that we can uh, communicate between the providers with the SSH, and we can also have multiple services running where we round robin the connection or the HTTP with our requester as a proxy. So I hope this can spark some ideas on what you, you can do on Golem. As I mentioned before, we're kind of building up from the first beta where we started with quite basic functionality and to the second beta where we had services. And now we're using these services to communicate in different ways throughout the Golem network. So as we grow, we're making things a lot more flexible and more interesting in terms of what you can do on the Golem network. So I hope that you've potentially got some interest and if you're interested to learn more, uh, please join chat.golem.network and uh, talk to the team, uh, ask for more links on documentation. Even the community is super happy to get engaged and on top of that, we've just launched our new use case, which is called Thorg. It's essentially uh, mining uh, Ethereum using Golem and giving out layer two payments, which hasn't yet been seen before. So the layer two payments are on Polygon. And it is a very exciting kind of non-custodial use case for mining and mining pools. So thank you for watching. and. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll see you in the community. Bye, everyone.